The OpenAI open source project, OpenAI, has just done something game-changing. It has released a completely open source demo of an airline-style customer support system that you can run yourself from home. But this is not just a demo. It's a real showcase of how multiple AI agents can work together in real time as a coordinated team. Everything is built on OpenAI's new Agents SDK, which has been highly anticipated since the spring. Technically, it runs on a Python backend with Uvicorn and a Next.js frontend that shows you a live chat window and a visualization that reveals, step by step, which agent is taking control. For example, if you type, can I change to an aisle seat on flight 347, the system doesn't just respond, it collaborates. The triage agent analyzes your intent, transfers the task to the reservations agent, which checks the seat map and makes the change. The same happens with cancellations, flight statuses, or FAQs. And how is it all kept under control? With two guardians, the first blocks irrelevant topics, like asking for poems about strawberries, and the second detects attempts to force the system to reveal its internal programming. But the most impressive thing is its modularity. You can add your own agents, change the rules, or reinforce boundaries without touching the system's core. It is literally the internal blueprint OpenAI uses to build its systems. Do you think this modular agent approach is the future of customer service, or is it just a passing trend? Let me know in the comments, and if you're interested in the future of AI and real-world action, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. OpenAI breaks with Scale AI. Subscribe now quietly but firmly. OpenAI has started to sever ties with Scale AI. Why? Scale just sold 49% of its company to Meta for $14.8 billion, making Meta its majority partner. And yes, that means Scale's CEO will now join the most experimental AI projects of his new boss, Meta. For OpenAI, this is unacceptable. They don't want a key data supplier to now report to their direct competitor. In fact, they've been phasing out scale for months, and they're not alone. Google is doing the same. Why does it matter? Because scale is no longer just a data labeling company. Its specialized annotation team is exactly what OpenAI and Google need elsewhere. So yes, we are witnessing corporate drama mixed with a restructuring in the AI supply chain. What do you think? Can Meta leverage this purchase to its advantage, or is it a risky move? Midjourney launches its first video model. Midjourney, known for its unique visual style, is finally venturing into video. And while it's far from competing with Sora or Runway, its dreamlike clip generation model marks a turning point in its journey. You only need an image. The system generates four five-second clips with that surreal aesthetic we all know. The catch? Generating video costs eight times more credits than generating images. And for now, it's only available on Discord. That said, you can extend each clip to 21 seconds, customize the movement, or let the system handle it. Its CEO, David Holtz, makes it clear. This is just the first step. They want to reach real-time generative 3D worlds. While Disney and Universal are already filing lawsuits for generating protected characters, the reception has been positive. Mid-Journey is starting slow, but with ambition. Would you like to see a mid-journey of the metaverse in the future? Do you think they'll pull it off? YouTube and Google's V3 model. YouTube just announced something huge. This summer, it will integrate Google's V3 model into shorts. It's the next step toward dominating short-form content. Selected creators already tested V2, but now the door opens for everyone with an even more advanced model. The result? More AI-generated 15-second content, more sci-fi skating robots, more creativity. Shorts already generate more than 200 billion daily views. And that's not all. Long-form videos are growing too, especially on TVs. Over 1 billion hours are watched on TV every day. YouTube also released its report for its 20th anniversary and confirmed something powerful. If you want virality, think mobile. If you want deep connection, create for TV. And if you can do both, you'll dominate the game. Do you think shorts will keep growing or will long form content rise again? Drop your opinion in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date with the best AI tools and content strategies, subscribe right now. MIT issues alert about AI and the brain. An MIT study raised red flags. Researchers compared how our brains respond when writing with ChatGPT with Google, 
or without any help. The result? Those who used ChatGPT showed reduced brain activity in areas related to memory and creativity. Literally, their brains worked less. Not only that, when asked to write again without help, the AI users couldn't even remember what they had produced. Meanwhile, those who started writing by hand and later used AI showed a spike in brain activity. The study suggests using AI to refine your work, not to create from scratch, is the best combination. And there's more. The study's author, Natalia Kosmina, found that language models even hallucinate when summarizing their own work, inventing false details. Her next study will focus on how programmers lose skills by overusing AI autocompletion. Are we losing something essential by delegating so much to AI? From collaborative agents to corporate battles, video generation, YouTube advances, and brain studies, AI never stops surprising us. But the real question is, are we using it consciously or just going with the flow? AI is powerful, but its real impact depends on you. How you use it, when you use it, and why. Are you building with it or letting it replace you? See you in the next episode.